Let's see. Where is he? Where is the? Where is his? Damn, they ain't got the the original clip. What kind of app is this, man? Okay, here it is. Here it is. I think this is it. What is the black girlfriend effect? This oh, is you don't know about glow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend. All of a sudden, he's got buzz cut. These two people are British. They they have a very popular... Uh, they pander to women, but they have a very popular podcast over there. Um, let me um drop the link, man, too, man. Let me drop the link if you know anything about this, man. Um, they they have a very popular podcast in, in across the pond, man, in England, where they talk about uh. They have very popular podcasts. And as you want to see, we got to get, we, we, we got to, uh, let's see uh, what they're going to talk about, what they're going to do. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see. What is the black girlfriend effect? This oh, is you not, don't know you about just glow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend. All of a sudden, he's got buzz cut, like, yeah. clean shape up. Nah, yeah. 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 yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> they yeah. shave their hair because they start losing it. Because they're so stressed being <laughs> around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. That's why they got to shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow set, a beard they because the there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I think, I think the black girlfriend effect, hmm, it might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys, have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love them all. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, really? That's, we love them all. Yeah, that means white. Who this is the part that black women were happy, were mad about. This is the part that black women were so mad about. This part right here. This is the part that black women were so mad about. Because this is this is this is this is the part right here. Watch. You think? Yeah. Do you guys? Do you guys have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, really? We love them all. Yeah. That means white. Who nah. yeah. <laughs> See that uncomfortable laugh? See that uncomfortable laugh? That's the part that they're mad about. That's the part they're mad about. Do you agree with that, Nick Town? That's the part they mad about? Uh, most likely. Most likely, yeah. Because he's a I, fucking comedian, man. Like, he's a comedian. Like, he literally does stand up. And this is his own show where he does comedy. It's, it's comedy. Like, yeah. I, I guess it's supposed to. Like this, the sensitivity shit in comedy it just doesn't mix, man. If you and I don't think th these jokes would have be these jokes like yeah. He didn't he didn't use the n word. He didn't say like. I mean, th 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 what he said was funny, and it was like these these were softball jokes compared to like you know what I'm saying like like what a what a real comic would do. We're talking about black women. Yeah, Even this Bill one. Bill Burr would go harder than Bill Burr would go harder than black, on black women than this. Yeah, this was some. This was really team. It just shows you how sensitive certain groups of people are. You know, if you want to cater to them, just know that uh, they basically don't want you to talk about them at all unless you're kissing their ass. Yeah, but that group right there. I mean, any comedy show you go to, the black comedian is going to dog out the white people in the in the crowd. 
He gonna he gonna see a white person in the crowd. He gonna say, "Oh, little white dude," and just oh, he's gonna imitate. Um, he's gonna like imitate their voice. You know, do the white dude voice, bro. That's why I don't like how I I don't like the sensitivity shit from niggas. If it's if it was if if Negroes were like more sensitive towards other groups of people, I wouldn't mind it as much. But niggas are like the least sensitive to every other group of people, but they want you to be the most sensitive towards them. And I just think that's that's some bullshit to me. Yeah, your your mic, you sound like you in um you sound like you on a, a spaceship or something, man, tonight, man. Uh, I'm I'm coming back. Look, what is the black girlfriend effect? This oh, is you don't know you about just glow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend. All of a sudden, he's got buzz cut, like yeah, clean he, shape up. Nah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Glow is up, bro. Yeah, I like that. that. Oh, I like that. that. <laughs> they yeah. shave their hair because they start losing it because they're so stressed <laughs> being around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. That's why they gotta shave their nah, hair, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow set, a beard they set because there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of it. <laughs> hilarious. I think I think the black girlfriend effect. Hmm, it might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys? Do you guys have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love them all. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Just, really? We love them all. Yeah. That means white. Who gets no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the part that got the black women mad, huh? The hesitation. Um, not black. Uh, when 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 they said, uh, which one, which one they like more? Yeah, I, I mean, not even the hesitation, just the the uncomfortable, like the the obvious body language. You know that everyone knows, like everyone, anybody with a sixth sense, with a you know a gut feeling, knows that. They think white women are better. You know what I'm saying? Well, some women have a gut sense that they're not as attractive as other groups of women. And generally speaking, you know, that seems to be correct. Well, not even attractive because, you know, like I, I live in Pennsylvania, that that white standard of beauty, you, you might see a Farrah Fawcett every like 10 years. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that in real life. But um, it's more of like, just get along with, you know what I'm saying? Easy to deal with, you know what I mean? That type of thing. You know, I think that's what, yeah. what it is. I don't think people, I don't think there's a goddamn um, Scarlett Johansson just walking around. Everywhere. No, I don't think that either. I just think black women are, you know, they have pretty huge insecurities that they project on everybody else. Oh, okay. You talking about yeah, from themselves, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they feel the worst. Of it. Like nobody feels worse about black women than themselves. So yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think, Yakub Floyd? <laughs> what are your thoughts? I think these two dudes got really nervous when he asked them this question because they instantly knew they're gonna get backlash from from sisters. Like Andrew, I prefer uh, the human ones. Yeah, right. They they did get it though. They they, they did get the backlash. Let's we won't get into that though. Um they they call you Swiss fisherman, um Yaku. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you for that, Mr. Clockwork. Swiss fisherman, yikes. Um so let's see this brother right here, he had a problem with the jokes. Um, that that white dude told on his own show, that that white comedian told on his own podcast. This dude is a CNN. He's on Monday Night Football, oh, analyst for CNN, and he's on First Take, and he's on NFL Today. He's an take. NFL analyst. <laughs> so he took time out of his own podcast to tell the white comedian what type of jokes to tell on his own podcast. He has his own thing, uh, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. No, this is not Emmanuel Acho. This is this oh, guy okay. hates Emmanuel Acho. He he actually despises Emmanuel Acho because Emmanuel Acho is 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 like Clarence Thomas to him. That's how far to the left this mm. guy is. That Emmanuel Acho is 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 basically Clarence Thomas. The the first thing is when you think about 
the two podcasters from the UK is we don't know if the black experience there is the same as the black experience for African Americans or black people that grew up. <laughs> so he's othering them, man. He's othering the brother the brothers from um we don't know that their, their blackness is America. the same as our black. I'm sure yeah, yeah, because obviously because they sat there and laughed at the white dudes or they they went on a white comedian show and they laughed at his jokes to be on this media tour in the US and to sit with Andrew Schultz was a big thing for them. I don't care if it was a big thing. And in addressing Andrew Schultz, who I do think is funny, who sits with Charlemagne and, and has some of these discussion about the culture, I believe he got too comfortable. So I would like to explain some things to him. Negro, you are wearing a cotton knitted shirt. You culturally appropriating white go throw on a goddamn loincloth, uh, uh, a goddamn antelope skin or some shit, man. <laughs> you got a watch, man. That's a Swiss timepiece you got right there, man. Go, uh, go look at the sun, man, and tell what time it is from looking at the sun, man. You, you literally got all your shots. You probably been to the dentist a thousand times, man. You, you, you ain't doing nothing but white stuff from white culture. Everything you do, your hair, the, the clippers that made your hairline, you got a nice hairline too, man. Salute to you, man. The clippers that made your hairline are white invention, man. Um, Listen, the, the metal, in, there's more metal on your um, index finger, I mean, on your um, ring finger than there was in all of Af Sub Saharan Africa 500 years ago. <laughs> uh, what are you talking about, man? Culture, somebody else's culture. This camera that you're on, this couch that you're sitting on, that those suits you wear on uh, Monday Night Football and inside the NFL, well, not inside the NFL, but whatever the show on, t on um, ESPN is, all that stuff was created by white folk, man. What you talking about, man? I want to explain to him the black experience, the black woman experience from my point of view. It was watching my mother start from a bank teller and wake work her way up for decades. He's really going to go. He's really going there off those two softball jokes. He's really going Martin Luther King, um, Farrakhan the third off of those two jokes. It's a dark, but run her own collateral department only to be mistreated when the bank was sold to another bank and be so sick on Sunday that I finally had to say, hey, mom, you're old enough to retire. It was to see her go to that same job eight to five to be treated anyway that she had to be treated because she only had a high school diploma. And then finally, he's, he's really doing boy. it. <laughs> he's really gonna do this, man. He putting all this on Andrew Schultz, two jokes. And he think about those two Andrew Schultz jokes. He didn't really say nothing about black women. He said something about the man. He said the man shaves his head because it's falling out dealing with a black woman. It, he wears a beard, the cushion for being slapped by a black woman. Like, he didn't really like those. That's as tame of jokes as you can get, man, from a comedian who goes, who's a, um, you know, edgy comedian. And this guy's going full. I'm not talking about half. He's going full. W.E.B. Booker T. Kendi X, Tahani Coates. He's going all that over that. Jokes a comedian said on his own podcast. Find ways to not only feed me, but do homework with me and my brother. Take us to practice because my dad worked three jobs. That was the first black woman experience that I had. Right. The second black woman experience I had is marrying a black woman and watching her sleep on my cot as doctors try to figure out why I'm 140 pounds. and I'm a 30 year old man who was 205 pounds a month before that. Her telling me months after that she would just go in the bathroom and cry every night in the hospital because she didn't want me to worry about her because I was so sick. That was your second experience. <laughs> your first my experience. Second experience with a black woman. <laughs> the connection you ain't had no girlfriends, dog. You went that... straight from your mama's house to get married. <laughs> you ain't you ain't smut. No dark butts out. Like you ain't have a you ain't have a uh, arc. Oh uh, no, nah, he. 
This is sun, man. You ain't you ain't smell no melungeons out. You ain't had no melungeon smut out heart <laughs> in between your first and second experience. Yo, this dude is a nut, man. <laughs> Yo, this, he, he, the, the, the fact that he works for ESPN and he's on first take every day and on get up and all those shows every day and he's talking about he's even lowering himself to talk about something a white comedian said on his own channel it's just insane man those brothers over espn between him shannon sharp stephen a smith like if i'm espn i'm like yo what are we doing these dudes is weird why they not being regular yeah, what they do? What they, every day they want some bullshit, right? For her to hold my family together, so I could be in the household with my children when I was doing things and I wasn't shit. That's the black woman experience. The black woman experience is black women caring so much about the nuclear black family, black women taking care of young black men to teach them how to be leaders, to teach them how to be strong. Which, which is why the community is the way it is. So yeah. what, what about your community says that that's what's going on, um, Ryan Clark? And he's from Louisiana. I think um, Metairie, some shit like that. He's from yeah, outside he, of, um That's that's right yeah. around where I'm from. I got a black woman experience, too, speaking of that, uh, in, from New Orleans. Just one oh, that man. came to my mind. One time I walked out of my apartment in downtown New Orleans. I was going towards Canal Street and... Lo and behold, down the street came uh, a whole gang of sisters, but it was two, like, 300, 400 pound sisters that were, like, beating the shit out of each other and just rolling down the street in, you know, fighting and shit. And I've always remembered that as being, like, very striking. Yeah, man. Um, these, this dude, like, for him to say that in the beef from Louisiana, which is, you know the worst, like they, they that's the worst son, son, the blackest stand in the province, I right? Mean, it's up there as far as education. I think it is last in education, and Mississippi, um, probably think, the only worst one. Worse than Baltimore, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Louis, um, Louisiana is, um, no, I think Baltimore's worse than New Orleans, but New Orleans used to be really, really bad, but I think it's probably better than Baltimore. It's now. like New Orleans zero, is 60%. zero percent yeah. versus Baltimore. like. 0.5 percent i think the reason i think um uh baltimore um louisiana is a little bit worse than a uh, baltimore baltimore's in the northeast it's proximal to the uh capital of america yeah new orleans and when i say i said louisiana because i uh, new orleans louisiana they have like those are some backwards them some but there's savages in baton rouge there's savages in bogalusa i mean it's, it's a lot tree of places tree for it yeah yeah i mean it's just it's it's all bad down there um uh yeah but jackson mississippi yeah might give them a run for the money but i think the stats though i'm just talking about statistically i think mm-hmm. louisiana's last in a lot of stuff man um when it comes to um Black folks caring so much about the nuclear black family, black women taking care of young black men to teach them how to be leaders, to teach them how to be strong, to teach them how to care about their God, about their family and it's about their communities and to raise their young black women to be independent enough to take care of themselves, but to understand how to support a family, how to support a man while also understanding how to get it on your own. That's the black woman experience. Yo, man, you could have just said, hey, white boy, man, I ain't like that joke, man. Um, yeah. When I see you, it's up. Like, it could have just, just been that, man. This nigga started talking about the nuclear family and, like, come on, man. A whole bunch of shit that everybody else does uh, more frequently, I might add. He giving the white dude so much, like, power and, like, that white comedian is just like a godlike creature now that like his jokes can destabilize black instead, shake the foundations of black stead to his core. For some reason, nobody else's sister experiences matter uh, in this conversation. You know, the, the demand my... for racism in the sun community is so high, they will grasp at the smallest thing they can, you know, they'll take offense yeah. in 
everything they see. Yeah, it's man, not, this is yeah. this is sad, man. This is he doesn't understand how embarrassing this is too. Like, this is embarrassing. This should have been a. It, you shouldn't have made this video, but if you made it, it should have been thirty second stops. Thirty seconds would have been too long. Yeah, I seen your um podcast the other day, Andrew Schultz, man, talking about black women, man. Uh, you get a little too comfortable, you know, talking about the culture, man. I know you hanging with Charlemagne and stuff, man, but you know what I'm saying? Still remember, man, you you a guest in this house, man. Always remember that. And that would have been that would have been too much. That would have been too much. Because it was like you should have never even said that in the first place. Experience that I know. The reason that black women are tough is because when you're mistreated in the way that black women are, if you're not tough, you just die off. You don't survive. That's the black woman experience. Ooh, look like he died. <laughs> just die off. You don't survive. Oh, <laughs> off, you don't survive. <laughs> he like, oh shit, this nigga up here talking. He got us all looking crazy, man. Okay. <laughs> he like, man, look, man, because he probably went on script. He probably was like, you look, look, fellas, I gotta address this social situation real quick. Like, all right. Oh man, this nigga, man, like he just embarrassing. You're a embarrassing bro, bro that's the black woman experience and the other piece of it is too is something that i've learned and i learned it from black women is people feel so comfortable disrespecting them because we don't respect them publicly who disrespects black women and gets away you can't even mispronounce kamala's name man i even i called her the right name because i'm scared to say it kamala man you say Kamala, man, you in trouble, man, if you a white person. So what are you talking about, man? What are you talking about? Black congressmen being sassy as hell. They done turned the um the congressional floor at the Capitol into the goddamn um bad a bad girls club, man. The fuck is we talking about, man? Name a time recently that a non-black person has Going in on a system. Mm. And it could be in any walk of life, any, anywhere. Congress could be a show. When last time we seen that? The, the most protected class. And of course, um, they get screwed over when they're dealing with us. We the most murderous group in the world, man. In America, man. So they, yeah, I mean, nobody that. makes life harder for black women than uh, black men. I mean, it, it, you know, it's been exactly. observed plenty of times before. I think Nick never, got, got disconnected. He would never address that in a million years. Because we don't respect them publicly, right? White people for so long have used the excuse, why can't I say the N-word when you say that to yourselves or call yourself that or use that in your music, music, which is bullshit, right? But why is it bullshit? Like, why, why, why is it bullshit? Like I said, at the Fever game, during every time out, because I watch it on the WNBA app, and they don't go to commercials, they just go to the, um, they just scan the crowd and go to the little um, guy that, goes around with the mic and you know the, and all that stuff in the stadium right and um every song that's played there is suck this bounce on that f that switchy hit you with the switchy my shooters it's all gangster lyrics and whole lyrics on every song and now the songs are hot, hot songs they're like you know dirt sexy red you know, um, Lotto, whatever the hell, you know, Meg Thee Stallion. It's all the hot songs that you would hear on the radio, but the lyrics are insanely inappropriate. Yeah, it's all about fucking, you know, extreme violence and shit. Completely inappropriate for that setting. I and you're telling me those white people can't sing along to those lyrics because when, they're, when they've paid fucking... 
seven hundred bucks to take their family to the fucking game. They can't sing along to those lyrics. I think the fact that the sons took the N word from us is 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 a tragedy. They owe it to us. It's a pressure relief. Well, we didn't take it from you. You ain't got nothing to do with this. You haven't done nothing. You licked this side, licked this side. What is licked this side? Yeah, who, who'd y'all even colonize, bro? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're white by by default, so. We about to do hey, something, so y'all. Just wait. It doesn't matter if we if we if we colonized or not. <clears throat> If you're you ain't even got no slave owners in your ancestry. My mm. word. Man. A white people have said, if you're using the B word, or they say, if you're using the B word, why can't I call them that? That's bullshit as well, right? That's excuses to be certain things and be disrespectful when you shouldn't be. So when you're sitting across from Andrew Schultz and he's talking about a spirit, an experience that he can't understand because his wife is not black. You don't have the right to talk about it. You don't have the right to speak on something that you don't know, right? Oh, and man. to make a joke about what the experience is. is So his, his wife would have to be black for him to be able to see what goes on in the world, to, be, to crack jokes. So basically, the only jokes he can tell are about things that he's directly experiencing now because – he could have had. I'm sure Andrew Schultz has um been to Brown Town a few times. Man. Yeah, I'm sh you know what I'm saying. Yeah, Schultz is juice crew, ain't he? Schultz. Yeah, yeah, he's he juice crew, man. But um, we don't have to get into no deep um thing about that. Oh uh, no, nah. I'm just saying. It's just you know he he it is what it is, man. Um, he uh, let's see. I think he got a black ex girlfriend. Okay, so he. He's, he he dated a he dated a a, a, a black chick. Uh, uh, well, she she ain't black. She she's a Melungeon man. Melungeon, okay. Melungeon. Yeah, he dated a Melungeon before. Um, but um, let me see. Uh, let me see what is when it? whenever um whenever the N word debate comes up, I always ask ask sons, is the word bad? Is that is should people should white people not say the n word because they're white or because the n word is bad? Because depending on which response they give, then I'll know they're on some like bullshit. Like if you say the n word is bad because it's a bad word, then automatically you sh it's not a white thing. You're just you should be saying no one should say the word, but they don't they don't hold themselves to that standard. So it's really just they because they're white. It. Everybody yeah, they, wants to say it. I mean, it's well, not bad if it's true, right? If you think everybody doesn't say the word when they're singing these songs, like I remember one time, um, me and my wife, we went on uh, not vacation, but we, we stayed at this house with with, with a bunch of um, her friends, like on on the Outer Banks, right? And one of the guys was Asian, right? Um, what was his name? God damn. He's a real f funny Asian guy, man. But he was um, um, he was cool as shit though. He was he was a friend of my wife's friend's baby daddy, but whatever. He's a white guy. But that song that was around the time where uh that song uh, what's the uh, what's the song with Kanye um the Ray Charles hook. I ain't saying she a broke, and, but she ain't, I ain't no I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't fucking with gold digger. digger. Yeah, yeah, gold digger, right? And he and we was partying in there, and then that song comes on, and you know I'm the only black dude there, right? And I'm just sitting there, and I'm I'm not even thinking about nothing. The, the music's playing, everybody's just having a good time, and he's like, "I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but I ain't messing with no broke that word that I can't say." And broke he just kept saying that through the whole song. <laughs> like he kept saying. He, every time the hook you know, came, he said, I ain't messing with no gold digger. I mean, he said, I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke. Broke, that broke, that man. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, yo, it was like, it was like, wow. Like, he was, it was so funny because it was like, I wasn't even thinking about it until he said it. Then I was like, oh, yeah, that's right, man. Like, yo. 
he literally like that'd be weird as shit if you just kept saying like it would have been weird if he was just sitting there like that you know just saying it like it would have been weird because like i'm the only black dude there um <laughs> And I'm just, you know what I'm saying? And, and shit like, like the that. the song's about you. And he don't know me like that, right? Like, he don't know me like that. It's just like, we just, all these people just happen to be together because our um, our, our girlfriends are, are friends, right? So it's like, we, we just happen to be there, all the guys that are there. And it's like, we don't know. We don't know each other like that. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, so, it's like, yeah. So it would have been weird. Because he's white, saying it. No, he was an Asian dude. Oh, he's, it it would have been weird just because he's like now I'm black and saying it. Yeah, because it's like yo, if if he would he was standing on the chair right, and um in the in the Airbnb right, and he was just jamming with all this, and then when that song came on, he was like, I say she a go. He was singing like he was just he would have been, been shouting broke nigga, and it would the white women who were there were liberal as fuck. I'm the only black guy there. All the white guys were liberal as fuck too. But it would have just like they would have been like they would have been madder than me. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Me. It's very, very confusing, honestly. It's just to me is I think one of the things that makes something weird is when everybody avoids it. It's like, no, I can't say it. Even though I actually do say it. And nobody's around. Yeah, like and, like, and and when you know when he's around, he doesn't say that word that I can't say. You know he doesn't say that. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's the the whole n word shit is like super weird to me, man. Ah, but you know, sun suns are gonna crash for for all the gliders in the audience. There's no <laughs> suns. Son's ready to crash out over that word, bro. I done spoke to niggas. Niggas are well. It has ancient power. Whites think they invented it, but it's actually a derivative of an ancient Melungeon word, yeah. Malunger. And like, what up, my Malunger? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's you know. Yeah, so yeah. no. Nah, if you if you think sons don't really care, no, nah, these these niggas ready to crash out. Just look up videos of. Gliders, especially saying it around sun. These niggas is these niggas are actually real life apes. They, they don't give a fuck. They already do that time in jail. Yeah, and um, somebody said it's it's, it's weird for Kanye to put that in the song. It, it is. It, it's so weird to um for, for him to name that album what niggas in Paris. Like so any so if anybody ever said or well, says the name of your album, the one with Jay Z back in the day. They got to say, in hey, Paris? Have seen, yeah, have you seen that? I like the Kanye album. Um, Which one? You talking about um, Watch the Throne with him and Jeezy? Huh? You talking about yeah. Watch the Throne with him and Jeezy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that one, that one, that one song they had, Niggas in Paris. I don't it's even like, remember the lyrics for this. What the fuck did they say? Um, yeah, oh, boss so hard, song. motherfucking trying to find me. But no, just, yeah. just the fact that the song, like I'm talking about, like every song with the, like you know, what I'm saying, like, like um, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's it's weird that blacks do that, and yeah. they, and they, they don't want white people to say it when the people, like we we did the we did that Kodak Black concert the other day, when he when he gave that speech, he he stopped the he stopped the music and gave a speech to the crowd about Trump, and. <laughs> When they pan the crowd, I'm talking about this is an arena. This looks like 10, 15,000 people, right? You, it was just a sea of white people, like always. Yeah, if I was, if I was like one of those sun entertainer dudes, I would still say the n word, but I would encourage the gliders to uh, to say it with me. Hey, y'all, sing along. Yeah, because well, at the end of the day, they're the one paying all my bills. I mean, uh, what if what if the gliders before they see it, what if they apologize for everything that some people have been through? Can you say it now? Like sorry for slavery, nah. sorry for segregation, sorry for mm -hmm. redlining, sorry that sorry for DNA. Can they say it? 
there's nothing you can do, man. Um, let me, um, let me, uh, let me, because he 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 should have addressed it by now, but he's still on his Martin Luther King speech. It's one thing if you're talking about haircuts and you're talking about clothing and you're talking about beards, <laughs> or you're comparing what our friend Travis Kelsey looked like when he was with Kayla Nicole to what he looks like now that he's with Taylor Swift, right? That is part of it. You start to assimilate to the people around you. What you're not going to do, though, is be disrespectful and say you have to develop a defense mechanism because of alleged violence. Black women aren't violent. Black women don't just walk around. <laughs> right. The, the, they're not angry. Uh, oh, they, they don't be out here team the, this bitch up if they don't get, you know, they're way at, Bur what is it, Burger King? If they don't have it that way. The Waffle House. Or Popeye's. Church is chicken, too. Yeah, McDonald's. McDonald's is probably Ooh, worse. McDonald's. From cold fries, yeah, they they are um, yeah, they they black women are not. I love violent. I love I love hearing son say we're not violent. Like they just have to keep saying it. it's more for, it's, it's more like reinforcement for them than the, it, It's kind of weird, man. It's always weird for me to see a rich victim. You know, like like dude, you you rich, bro. Look at this. Look at this. this yeah, is, this but he's still a viral. son, man. At yeah. heart. This is going viral right now, man. This 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 clip right here on um on on, on uh social media. This clip right here. You got Ooh, right, that's it. Ooh. You got dick where you know you. Ooh, ah ah think about it. Run that back. You got Ooh, right, bitch. You Go on that shit for the vibe. Do it for the vibe. Do it for the vibe. So apparently, this girl got raped at the party and apparently so. clown on her as she walked oh, away. Oh, wow. That's disgusting. We was queens. <laughs> that but if she, if she, if she go to the police, she's snitching, though, man. Wow. I'm speechless. I'm hanging like <laughs> yeah, it. Leaves you, it does. It kind of leaves you speechless. But you know who somebody who's not speechless? Black women. Me, oh no, man. I, 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 I buddy, man. Uh, I buddy right here, man. Uh, he, 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 he been talking about this. <laughs> he been talking about Andrew Schultz. He ain't, don't. He ain't got to the point yet, man. He probably just hasn't seen this video. Don't don't black women have a higher homicide rate than white men? Right. Uh, uh, per capita. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. Dude. They got a higher, they have a higher homicide rate than white men. That is impressive, man. Yeah, they awesome. commit violent crime at a higher rate than white That's... men do, but white white men commit a higher volume of violent crime. And it's not to the sisters. Yeah, sisters put in to work. Be angry or to be treated a certain way. No. Oh, Black no, women, to me, to, to what he looks like now that he's with Taylor Swift, right? That is part of it. You start to assimilate to the people around you. What you're not going to do, oh, though, is be yeah. disrespectful and say you have to develop a defense mechanism because of alleged violence. Black women aren't violent. Black women don't just walk around to beat people or to. My man, my man, was yeah, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> right, I that. That shit is funny. It wasn't no yeah. amen. He ain't say. He ain't say right on, brother. Or amen. Right. He just looked at him like, 
Right. You, you ever been somewhere with your man telling a story, like your homeboy telling a story? Like, Some hey, man. And I told that nigga, I told that bitch ass nigga, man, I slapped the shit out you, right? And you like, yeah, yeah. You thinking of your mind, like, nah, nigga, you ain't tell him that. <laughs> like, right, yo. Whenever, like, whenever son said they not violent, I just, I think they're just trying to convince themselves, like, right. Yeah. They just keep saying it over and over again. Why? Yeah. Why do people think we're violent? <laughs> Yo, that reaction Buddy had is literally the, agony, the entire agony. Like, uh, we didn't say anything about violence. Why are people so paranoid around say, it? You have to develop right. a defense mechanism because of alleged violence. <laughs> Black women aren't violent. Black women don't just walk <laughs> around to beat people or to be angry or to be treated a certain way. No. Black women, to me, were the entire front line of the Alton Sterling protest when he died, when he was killed what? by cops in Louisiana. Which one was that one? Which one Black was that women one? are on the front lines the of everything that's about us. CDs Black women station, understood that, that they had to take a back seat because as we were fighting for rights in our country. Alton Sterling was the one who, um, who, who just had just come home from doing, um, like, I think, like, Eight years in the penitentiary for um, raping a little a little girl, for um, and and he um, was out there selling CDs and he pulled the gun on a man, a black dude out there while he like that was his little spot you know like in front of the store, and he pulled a gun on some guy out there. The guy went and called the cops. The cops showed up and were like, "Yo, uh, what's we heard you pulled the gun on the guy." And then he got in a fight with the cops and he had the gun and he was trying to pull the gun out while both cops were wrestling with him. And they had they wrestling over the gun, trying not to get shot. And then one of the cops pulled out a gun and shot him. Oh, uh, you know, you know what? I I'm not gonna lie to you. It's all a blur. All these dudes, Mike Brown, Trayvon, it's all a fucking blur, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. George Alton Floyd. Sterling was Alton Sterling was uh listen. We all we got a history, man. But by judging by what the moment, um, no, but but what people say is they don't like, like you don't like child molesters, you don't like pedophiles. Um, uh, he was a bad guy. You know his biography. <laughs> It says Alton Sterling was a 37 year old CD vendor in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Can you get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Jesus. And what do they call him? An entrepreneur? Uh, for, uh, everything but, I'm sure. Wow. Known locally in Baton Rouge as CD Man. I, I just love him. It's crazy. He was how a sons, hustler. <laughs> how he was CD is... Man in 2016. Black black folks are drawn to to shit bags, like flies to shit. They love their fucking degenerates. Seriously. Uh, yeah, he was a uh, uh, he was a he was a he was a bad dude. Um, so here go his, and listen, this is Snopes. Let me let me go to this to Snopes, man. I'm I'm be I'm gonna be uh. You know, fair and balanced, this brother's no longer with us, man. So we're going to go to Snopes. Uh, this is him right here. Uh, I remember it says, this one. It says, Alton Sterling, longtime criminal and gang member, question mark. Um, it says, I claim, the claim by the, you know, racist media was that Alton Sterling was a member of the Bloods gang and had a lengthy criminal record. Um, so it says, what's true? Uh, Alton Sterling was a registered sex offender with a lengthy criminal record. What's false? No evidence documenting that Sterling was a member of the Blood Gang. Has <laughs> surfaced. Yeah, you know what I mean. Right. You know, you know, like uh, you, the Bloods keep their all, detailed all the, records, yeah. and they yeah, exactly. them. <laughs> yeah, you know, he was a pedophile, but you know, he was in the Blood. We went yeah, to the Library uh, of the Bloods and did our own research, and she it <laughs> was a freelancer. So this is his criminal record. Okay. For all the people, uh, so this is, uh, you know, 98 to 2016. Um, I will say this. Um, from 2009 to 2015, man, 
he seems to have gotten his life together. No crime, no no offenses between those. Um, it like that. Six years. <laughs> he, he was bad. Yeah. By <laughs> he didn't reoffend in those six years. <laughs> Yeah, he probably violated rules in the joint, but that's about it. Yo, Ike, if this, if this son man would have, like, mentioned, like, you know, calculating or, or, or like, a decent person, I would have been stunned. You got to yes. gotta, gotta, gotta shout out, you know, the George Floyds of the world. Yeah, calculator. Shout out to calculator, man. Calculator, calculator. got no statue. Yeah, calculator don't get no statue, man. We, we we might have to do the calculator story again, man, when I get the chance. So. We're the only ones who remember calculator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The only ones. The only one I've I've never heard his name anywhere else. This racist but, channel. You know, treated a certain way. No, black women to me were the entire front line of the Alton Sterling protest when he died, when he was killed by cops in Louisiana. Black women are on the front lines of everything that's about us. Black women understood that they had to take a back seat because as we were fighting for rights in our country, that we as men were going to be able to get through the door before they were. So they decided to push us forward and give us ideas and give us help and give us support and be our biggest cheerleaders because they knew we'll have an opportunity to get in the door first. The problem is, so many times now we're getting in those doors and we aren't reaching back and bringing them through that same door with us. And this is just another example of that. So whoever is Andrew Schultz's black friend, Charlemagne, you're his black friend. Sit him down, talk to him, tell him what the black woman experience truly is because he ain't married to one and he's obviously never been around enough of them to know how strong, how beautiful, how independent, let, let's be honest, though. Even if he was married to one, they would find some way to say that that wasn't. Yeah, he, he, he still didn't have. He still didn't have rights. So, so, like, let's cut that out. Uh, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, support the channel via PayPal, Cash App, or the Super Chat. Take the five dollar challenge, man. It's only five bucks, man. Uh, it ain't a thousand. We ain't the thousand dollar challenge, man. It's a five bucks challenge, man. Um, support the channel. Um. Yeah, this 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 guy is, is 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 he there would be nothing that that white dude could have done. That white dude could have marched on Selma. That white dude could have done um he could have he could have donated his entire salary to uh the fucking local boys and girls club. And he would still be like that crazy. That doesn't what? Him right. It's crazy. You know who did that? Uh, he he donated his whole entire salary, Chris Long, uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. So the, he doesn't get nothing and stuff. Yeah, you don't nope. get nothing for helping black folks. Nothing. Nope. Man, um, he he just want to be. I think Ryan Clark is trying to. He's trying to be bigger than a football player or something like he wants his name to be out there and it's it's sorely it's failing. Like it's sorely he's trying, failing. He's trying to like, be like uh, the biggest Manuel, son. I shit. Yeah, he's trying to be like yeah, the, that's like what, the biggest son. He, uh, I know, but he he hates the Manuel Acho, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, he hates he the Manuel Acho. He he's a tenor. He's a tenor like me. He's a tenor like me. I mean... I mean, I mean, y'all, y'all been through. Yeah, exactly, man. Um, it's a lot of cope. Yeah, sons just like to talk about how oppressed we are when we're really not. Yeah, not at all, actually. Uh, you, you, the, I mean, you guys are being hunted, but it's about other sons. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, it's just so sad, man. Um. Let's let, let's 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 do calculated story right quick. Man. But they are. But to be Not, fair, I the brothers are hunting literally everybody, so don't feel too yeah. special either. Yeah, they're let's opportunistic predators. This, this is a kid that he would never talk about. He would never talk about this kid, man. And th th this kid, there's thousands of these kids, but this kid right here was a special kid, man. 
Good evening, I'm Hazel Sanchez and for Jessica Moore. We begin with a tragic story in Far Rockaway, Queens. Tonight, police are looking for whoever shot and killed the child and wounded his cousin. We have an exclusive interview with the boy's father. CBS 2's Alice Gaynor joins us live from Edgemere in the Rockaways with more. Alice? Hazel, it happened right here at this home behind me. The boy's father is in disbelief. He was here when this happened. This is actually his sister's home. He believes his nephew was the target. Police say this gunman fired off more than half a dozen rounds at a home on Beach 45th Street around 930 Saturday night. One of those bullets struck 29-year-old Kyle Forrester in the shoulder. Another hit his cousin, 10-year-old Justin Wallace, in the stomach, killing him as he stood inside by the door. <laughs> I, can't my, I can't deal with this. Through tears, his heartbroken father, Albert Wallace, spoke exclusively with CBS 2's Kieran Dillon, bloodstains still visible on his shirt. He says he was in another room when he heard all the noise and ran to see what it was. I saw my, my nephew on the ground bleeding. Then I'm turning around and saying, then where's my son? Then he saw Justin. Abby. Wind on, curl up. All I could have heard from my son one at a time, I am. <gasps> I said, oh my God. Then I started to stop him. I said, wake up, don't sleep. Neighbors heard the shots, but at first thought they were just firecrackers until they saw first responders. Whole night, I did not sleep. Just not? thinking about that little boy. I was, I was like, God, please save him. But sadly, he could not be saved. I tell the doctor to go back in and pump his chest. Go and pump it. Go and pump it. Because he doesn't die. He's too young for that. Earlier Saturday, Wallace and his son were at the beach. They then went to his sister's house here for a barbecue and were about to leave when the shooting began. Almost at the door, going home with my son. And my sister called me back. Police released more video of the person they're looking for and also video of a blue car. Wallace believes the shooting was motivated by a longstanding dispute between his nephew and a neighbor. Now, Justin Wallace, just shy of his 11th birthday Tuesday, becomes the latest victim of gun violence in New York City. Something, <laughs> something is out here. It's not going to leave me. And a father who says he never went anywhere without his son will have to try and find a way forward without him by his side. Hey. And his nephew, 29-year-old Kyle Forrester, he is expected to be okay. Police would not comment on a motive. They are still investigating. If you know anything about the shooting, give them a call. It's crazy how often that happens, though. That scenario. Maybe yeah. not. Maybe not shooting right into the house, but even like a straight bullet. Now to a developing story in Queens, where right now, within the last hour, a man was formally charged with murder in the deadly shooting of a 10-year-old boy. Right now, here is a live look from Edgemere and Far Rockaway. People have placed balloons outside the home where Justin Wallace was killed Saturday night. Neighbors are expected to gather for a vigil there soon. Meantime, the accused killer, well, he turned himself in last night. CBS 2's Andrea Grimes, outside oh, wow. the courthouse in Kew Gardens, where the the suspect was just arraigned. Andrea. Christina Maurice, Jovan Young tonight is being held without bail. We learned at his arraignment just a short time ago, he allegedly fired about eight rounds with one bullet fatally striking that little boy's heart and lung. Jovan, do you have anything to say? 29-year-old Jovan Young stayed silent as detectives led him out of the 101st Precinct last night in Far Rockaway. The same day, Justin Wallace would have turned 11 years old. Police say Young is the man who shot and killed the innocent boy Saturday night, leaving behind his grief-stricken family. <laughs> we reassured them we do everything possible within our power to bring the perpetrator to justice. We have done that. Uh, the sad thing is it's not going to, you know, bring their, their beautiful son back. Young's relatives ignored reporters leaving his arraignment late this afternoon, God, where man. he faced numerous uh -huh. charges, including murder and attempted murder. Justin was at a family barbecue at his aunt's house on Beach 45th Street, getting ready to leave with his father. <laughs> That's That's young, young mute, I think you're on mute. That's a goddamn world, world of beast right there. Are these the black women that Ryan Clark was talking about that always did the support? 
these, these women yeah. came, they came to court to support the shooter. Jesus oh, Christ. That's Har- Harambe Modo right there. Yeah, the beautiful sun back. Young's relatives ignored reporters leaving his arraignment late this afternoon, where he faced <laughs> numerous charges, including murder yeah. and attempted murder. Justin was at a family barbecue at his aunt's house on Beach 45th Street, getting ready to leave with his father when Young allegedly started firing into the house. Ha- just, just firing into the house. Right. At a, with, with people having a cookout, just. You mad? He, he was mad at one dude. He was mad like they had a parking over a parking space. His um one one of the dudes that lived there they had a beef over a parking space. So he 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 fired into their house while they were having the cookout. Right. I mean, again, I, it's crazy how often that exact scenario occurs, and it's crazy how these sun people and these glider cooks like saying that this act here this regular action was because of a what? Segregation? Systematic racism. Fuck out of here. Redlining. Fuck out of here. No fathers in the home. If we had had a whole tap out here right now, he'd say some nonsensical bullshit, bro. And this little boy, his nickname was Calculator because he he, he was very good at math and he helped all his friends at school, all his fellow students with their math work, and they um, nicknamed him Calculator. It's killed. The prosecutor says his cousin Kyle was shot three times and is in critical condition. Police say the motive was an ongoing dispute between neighbors about this shared driveway, and Young was connected to one of the families involved. The message. So. These two f- groups beefing about this driveway, and young, this guy, the shooter, I guess he was called, um, like, yo, man, you know how you got that person, every family, hey, man, you niggas over here bullshitting, da 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 And he came over to, he's the thug in the family, they called him, I guess, and he came, ah, man, fuck that, I got that shit, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go light their house up, and he would have gotten away with it. Nine times out of ten, dudes get away with this shit because there's no motive. Some dude just runs up and shoots at a house. This dude has no motive. The cops really can't find him. Like, why did he do it? But um, they they were able to catch this guy this time. But this dude didn't even live there. He didn't live at he didn't live at anyone's the house. He was just like a, a cousin. The sister's a uh, superpower, right? Yeah, Call exactly. Call brother. Exactly. Call her brother started firing into the house. Justin was killed. The prosecutor says his cousin Kyle was shot three times and is in critical condition. Police say the motive was an ongoing dispute between neighbors about this shared driveway and Young was connected to one of the families involved. The message is clear. If you use a gun in New York City, you will be arrested. If you harm someone, if you kill someone, you will be brought to justice. There will be consequences more than ever before. Justin's death outraged many in the city and beyond. Another precious life gone amidst a surge in shootings. His family says he was about to graduate from the fifth grade, describing him as charming and intelligent, a lover of music and cars who had his whole life ahead of him. Young did not enter a plea at his arraignment, but his attorney noted that he did surrender last night to police. She did ask the judge that he be placed in protective custody. Reporting live in Kew Gardens, Queens, Andrea Grimes, CBS. Damn. I feel for their father, man. Yeah. I would have been stunned at the incident. I would have been flabbergasted by the reason. Yeah, that was actually a good reason. Like, uh, on the spectrum of reasons, things like that happen in Blackistan. Right. That was, Damn. you know, up there. Think I mean, about think that. about it. But then you have to smoke it. Yeah. I mean, um, salute to Doug Chunks, man. He says, late night at the shop for me. Salute, nation. Please hit that like button. Worker bots. Also, RIP DVK. Salute. Shout out to DVK. RIP DVK. Doug Chunks, man. Let's see if we can match Doug Chunks, Nation. 
Doug Chunks gifted 50 Oc Nation memberships. Can, can we get 50 people to take the $5 challenge for the Oc Nation memberships that Doug Chunks? Can we at least try to get 50 people to take the? I mean, brother, donate 50 memberships every time he comes up here, man. Take the $5 um, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, yeah, man, pledge. The $5 pledge. Show your um, sh show your uh, allegiance to the nation in a similar fashion that uh, Doug does, man. Don't let Doug be the only one that um, reps the nation like that, man. Um, yeah, so support um, your, your safe space. Your yeah, exactly. Safe space. Support your safe space, man. Let's let you know what. Um, let's see what uh what else is going on. Um, oh yeah, you know what? We we could we could watch a few more people uh get mad about uh what that comedian said. And I and I replay what the comedian said for 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 the people that just got here, man. Um. Uh, yeah, me, and I, I, I I didn't see what he what the what the Gladiator King said, or the Glacier Gladiator said. Yeah. <laughs> let's see, man. Uh. Let's see what he let me show you. Nah, glider, he's juice crew. Yeah. I thought it was on radio. Oh, oh, my fault. My fault. Yeah, you know, you gotta, it's, it's gotta still make a, that distinction. Yeah, uh, he's still a white guy, man. Um, let's see. Uh where is it? Um a lot of sisters are upset. That's a lot. He's guilty of sister. God damn what she mad about. Um Mom. let's see. <laughs> right, uh, right. <laughs> uh God damn, man. Where, it's like, yo, what the fuck? They, they, they done scrubbed this shit from the goddamn. They done scrubbed it from the um. Sons have no power, right? We have no power. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> it was so bad that they scrubbed it. From the Gee, it was that him right there. That's the comedian. No, nah, it's him talking to these 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 black dudes, man. Uh, was this it right here? Okay, here it is. Yeah, here it is. Right here, there. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what, is the, what is the black girlfriend effect? This oh, you might not just blow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend. All of a sudden, he's got buzz cut, like yeah, clean shape up. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. that. Like that. that. Like that. They but shave yeah. their hair because they start losing it. Because they're so stressed <laughs> being around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. <laughs> That's why they got to shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow set, a beard they because there's up. more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I think, I think the black girlfriend effect, hmm, it might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys, have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> we love them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Just, we love them all. Yeah. That means white. Yo, who no. gets here? That means white. Hey, let me get a no. translation. Get your fans. Get them. <laughs> so that son, man, I literally, uh, yet again, stepped over the sea. Of that motherfuckers to talk about yeah. this dude. About yeah, these this. are English son men. Like this is hardly even relevant to America. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just so so tiring, man. That that's that this is this was the biggest thing like on black people's mind. That this and the black dude that hung himself in Henderson, North Carolina. Those are the two big stories for the it's black cold, man. The past week. Racism is 